just getting to the budget, I just want to, you know, as a, as a, as a conservative, are you worried about the debt and deficit? Do you think that your own government is, is looking at repairing the fiscal situation quickly enough? Well, look, I haven't seen the budget tonight yet, Chris, and uh, what we do know is that more than likely the deficit will be much lower this year than expected. So from that perspective, the budget is not as expansionary in fiscal policy terms as it was, if, if that's the case. Uh, uh, but I am concerned about the level of debt in this country and I do think more need to highlight its risks uh, to our nation. I am concerned about the extremely loose monetary policy the Reserve Bank is following and, and saying that they're not going to move rates from near zero for three years, almost regardless of data. Uh, I'm not so sure that's so wise. We've been very, very lucky not to have inflation for really my whole generation, but I, I, I'm always of the view, I, I, I like to read a lot of history and, you know, very ma many generations make the same mistakes that they've just forgotten uh, because they haven't occurred in their own generation. And there's, I don't think there's no risk of inflation occurring again. And I think we need to be wary of that. And with a trillion dollars in debt, that's, we've got the biggest debt to GDP, the biggest debt to our economic output since the end of World War II, and I don't want to be dramatic, but we could be on the eve of another conflict. And is it the right approach to be going into such years and such circumstances with very, very historically high debt levels? Yeah, and this is the point about leaving ourselves vulnerable for the next shock, whether it's conflict, whether it's a pandemic. Uh, it can come in a variety of uh, forms. So I'm just hoping that tonight we'll get a bit of a focus on how we're going to repair quickly to ensure that we are in a better position for the next shock. Yeah, look, we went into the um, pandemic not as strongly as we did after the Howard government, but uh, you know, the first uh, six or so years of this coalition government, there had been a serious attempt at budget repair. It was, it was difficult, while economic growth and wage growth in particular was still quite stagnant. Inflation's been low, so that all made it difficult to, uh, to, to pay back debt. But we were headed to a surplus uh, prior to the coronavirus hitting, and that was quite an achievement. Uh, now, all that, of course, has been thrown out the window, but uh, I just hope that we don't think that, uh, well, therefore, the, the taps can start opening because, you know, we've got part of this uh, agenda that's seeking to overturn and, and reset, if you like, they use the term reset and build back better. Part of that is this idea of monetary, modern monetary theory. I don't know if you've heard about that, but it's effectively the same theories that led to inflation in 17th century France... Yes, indeed. Uh, ..that led to hyperinflation in v the Weimar Republic, that somehow we can just print money mm. and you'll never have a problem with inflation or other that issues. That is just to call that out. A, a golden goose and free lunch. It mm. doesn't work that way, but we just keep forgetting okay. these lessons. So I hope we don't swallow that particular... Uh, uh, snake oil. Indeed, uh, indeed. Because it would be a great detriment to our economic strength. 